I've never been a lucky guy, but I won this trip to Lisbon because I am the best restaurant supply salesman in New Jersey. It's my first night in Lisbon, and I'm determined to leave my boring Jersey self behind. I walk a couple of blocks from my hotel and wind up in this beautiful promenade filled with shops and tourists. There is a gleaming white arch at the end of the street, and I head for it, taking in all the sights and sounds. I'm waiting for a light to change behind a handsome Scandinavian guy, eye level with his beautiful little ears. I just want to nuzzle them. I take in the rest of the crowd at the curb. They're all families and couples. On this beautiful street, all these happy people are coupled up, and I am the only one alone. Suddenly, my whole stats act life plays out inside my head like some drippy Lifetime movie. We open in Clifton, New Jersey, the day my old man walks out. Mom is this squat, nasty hypochondriac. After the old man bolts, she refuses to drive anymore. So now I'm her chauffeur, cook, and nurse. We need money, so I get a job at an Italian restaurant as a busboy. Then I graduate to waiter. It turns out I'm a good one, so they make me the manager. Somehow my days stumble into years. I come home from the restaurant one afternoon between shifts and mom's on the couch staring bug-eyed at Oprah. Ding dong, the witch is dead and I am free and I am 39 years old. Where did my life go? So I quit the restaurant and become a restaurant supply salesman. Now, Let's talk about sex. You first, because I don't have much to say. While the old lady was alive, I couldn't have any social life or it would kill her. I mean, there were a few hookups here and there, but now I could finally go to a gay bar and stay out all night. I heard about one called Feathers, so I chug some Grey Goose Courage and go. I make a beeline for an empty stool at the bar. There's a cute ginger boy next to me, and I'm already picturing his pug nose profile on the pillow next to mine. My elbow accidentally touches his, and my new ginger boyfriend glances at me, then through me, scoops up his money and goes. Ouch. Am I that hideous? I look at my own unhappy face, in the mirror across the bar. It's not that bad. But it isn't a mirror. There's a guy on the other side of the bar with the same face as me. His shirt is red, and I have to make sure that mine is blue. My twin waves me over. His name is Angelo, and he buys me a drink. We soon run out of things to say, so we keep drinking. When it's 1.30, I get ready to leave. Angelo puts his hand on my knee and squeezes. Then he squeezes my cock. We go back to my house. Angelo has a nice big ass. He moves in the next day. It lasts 10 bumpy years. Angelo's a hairdresser, but he keeps losing jobs because of his terrible temper. He doesn't pay his share of expenses takes money from my sock bra, and cheats on me all the time. But I'm going to stick it out because I feel that I'm lucky just to have somebody. One night, he picks a fight, storms off, and goes to live with some side piece. There are a few dates after that, then a bunch of hookups, then a lot of nothing for a long, long time. Now, I just fall instantly in love with every handsome man I see. Like this Scandinavian guy. A horn honks, my Lifetime movie ends, and I'm back on that corner in Lisbon. When the light changes, I follow those adorable Scandinavian ears toward that magnificent white archway. On the other side of the arch is a massive plaza filled with booths sprouting rainbow flags. It turns out this is Lisbon's gay pride celebration. 
and the square is filling up with an army of excited gay people of every color and shape. There's a small stage up by the waterfront where a DJ spins dance tunes. I stop at a booth from a leather bar and the bartender serves me a gin and tonic in a plastic cup. He smiles as he hands it over. His smile, the good music, the crowd's high spirits, and those first few sips of gin give me a happy buzz. Five people get up on the stage behind the DJ. A nurse, a priest, a nun, a sailor, and a cop who looks like Al Pacino from Serpico. They're like the Portuguese village people. Well, they start this synchronized dance routine to pump up the volume. You know, Serpico looks to be about 35 and his dancing is sexy and confident. Now I love him. I get another drink just to loosen up. People are dancing in front of the bandstand and I realize I'm dancing too. Even though I'd stop once Angelo told me I danced like a gimpy elephant. Maybe I do look like an elephant, but tonight I feel like a gazelle. Serpico leads his dancers down into the crowd. I am just a few feet away. There's magic in the air tonight and anything can happen. One more step and I can stroke that silky beard. My foot lands on a piece of lime and I skid into the hairy back of a leather bear. Well, he spins around like he's going to clock me. Then he smiles. I look around. But Serpico's gone, and I realize that I am wasted and hungry, too. I need some air, so I squeeze my way back toward the arch where there are some food stands. I get a greasy sausage sandwich, and I wash it down with a sagrish. I find a quiet spot and watch more excited people pour into the square. So I didn't wind up with Serpico, but I'm surrounded by my own gorgeous tribe and I feel so lucky. My belly and my heart are full and this is the best place to be in the whole world.